tonight. It's Madden NFL football. It's Super Bowl Sunday. We'll see Kirk Cousins and the Minnesota Vikings taking on Russell Wilson and the Seattle Seahawks. So much has happened since the Super Bowl was last in this part of the U.S. in the early 90s. The Rams and Chargers have both returned to L.A. and they've constructed this incredible new palace for football, SoFi Stadium in Inglewood. And it will be the scene tonight for Super Bowl 56. And what a matchup we have. Tonight, it's all on the line. We play for the Lombardi Trophy between the Seattle Seahawks taking on a second team from the NFC, the Minnesota Vikings. The stage is finally set, and here we go. Super Bowl 57 is underway. This fielded right at the goal line. And he'll go down as this drive will start at the 25-yard line. Seattle's first go on offense, forthcoming, and under center, of course, Russell Wilson. And he comes in off of a tremendous game in the NFC Championship round two weeks ago. This has been a team all season long that's really taken their identity from their quarterback, and he's been very vocal in the days leading up to this game that he believes that this is their time, and he's going to do all he can to will them to a Super Bowl win. This is the Oklahoma State alum, Chris Carson. Yeah, this will be a gain of five as he gets it to the 30. A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent gain. After the pickup of five, here's second and five. Wilson. That's caught by his tight end, Gerald Everett. That was a route run, not just with dexterity, but with intelligence. Found the hole in the zone, made sure the quarterback saw him, and was able to make the sure catch and flip the down marker back to one. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. This is Carson, and he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. Well, that's just a pile of bodies there, and that's when you kind of find out who's a tough guy, right? Who can stand up and make a play? It was only a three-yard run. 
But for both sides, they had to walk away from that feeling like, okay, I can stand up when the going gets tough in here. On the ground, this is Rashad Penny. That's a good, nice, crisp run for a first down. I wonder if the defense might have been loosened up a little bit, maybe anticipating a pass instead of the run that they got. A couple of first downs on the drive already as they'll go from the 47 now on first down. Here's Carson. And he's got it across the midfield stripe and into Viking territory. Give him five on the carry there and it'll be second down. That's a really nice, tough run inside, and they gained five yards on it. And to be frank about it, most offenses don't expect to get five yards on a play call like that. So when they do, they go back to their huddle with a little pep in their steps. They're starting to think that they're starting to dominate the line of scrimmage. They go back to Carson here on second. And he's going to be stopped just short of the first down marker at the Vikings 43 yard line. After a gain of five, they'll wind up being about a length of the football short here on third down. Wilson. That's complete to DK Metcalf. And he is going to have a Seahawks first down as that'll be a pickup of about five as they convert on third and inches. That throw is not going to get them a whole lot, but that really didn't matter, did it? They got what they needed on that throw. Picked up the first down, and I'm going cliche here. Game of inches, partner. Absolutely. Well, and you talk to me a lot about opening drives, how key those are to set the tone. You kept the drive alive. Third down conversion here is big. Throwing now, Wilson on first down. A quick target here, complete to Metcalf. And he's already got two catches on the opening drive. <laughs> they know he's going to be a handful. And sometimes you game plan for that offensively. You want to make sure that guy touches the ball, and sometimes it just happens naturally. And then you change your game plan. When he has the hot hand, you keep going back to him because he's running routes with confidence as the game goes on. On first down. It's Carson, and he's going to lose yards. They take him down at the 26. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. The running lanes have definitely not been there for him here in the first half, and I don't think it's all been his fault. His offensive line hasn't given him much space. A loss results there. Maybe just a slight detour on what's been a strong drive. Here's second and 11. Now it's Carson. And not much of a hole there as he gets it down to about the 24-yard line. After getting stuffed on first down, not much better there. Two-yard gain. And the big fella stuffed that one up in a big way. I think doubling him has to be a priority because you can't move up to the next level if you don't take care of him first. It's been a pretty long opening drive. This will be play number 11 coming up on third down. Out of the gun, here's Wilson. And that is incomplete. This Minnesota D up to the task on the third down pass play. We'll put a check mark in the box where the defense coordinator was saying, how well can we stay with these receivers if we're in man coverage? Because he just did it on that one. Force the incompletion. That allowed him to get bolder with his pass rush, won't it? Absolutely. Freeze up your guys elsewhere. So Wilson heads to the sideline and on comes Jason Myers for the Seahawk field goal. And this one, a 41-yard attempt. Myers' kick is good. And the Seahawks grab a 3-0 lead. Three points, probably not going to win this Super Bowl, but at least you get something on the opening drive. And it's certainly not going to lose it. So the bottom line is, come away with the points now, come back and get greedy later, and try and put it in the end zone.
Myers now converted on the field goal try. Now he's on to kick it away. Taken in at the three. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. Minnesota's offense and QB Kirk Cousins set to go here. And he comes in off of a tremendous game in the NFC Championship round two weeks ago. This has been a team all season long that's really taken their identity from their quarterback, and he's been very vocal in the days leading up to this game that he believes that this is their time, and he's going to do all he can to will them to a Super Bowl win. Cousins and the Vikings with a first and 10 at their own 26. They'll try and start this drive in the air. That's to Dalvin Cook, his running back. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. Just about every quarterback is trained to really look downfield first before you come back and make a nice safe throw. And in this case, that's exactly what he did. Found his running back let him create some space, and it turned out to be a nice play for the offense. The first carry now for Dalvin Cook, and he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. He's obviously a bit of a shorter running back. Sometimes when he goes up the middle like that, he, he gets lost in there, and then he pops out for 10, 20 yards. I actually asked NFL linebackers if that was true. Do you actually lose sight of some of the smaller running backs? And all of them confirmed that that can be a problem. Think of it this way. Two of the top running backs in NFL history, Emmitt Smith, Barry Sanders, both 5'10". Following the good run by Cook, here's another first and 10. And he'll give it here to his running back. And he sneaks his way forward only for a couple here, second down. They went right back to him, but he pretty much had nowhere to go on that play. Yeah, the previous carry looked pretty good. That one, maybe he was a little tired. I don't know. Yeah, maybe he should have tapped out and had a second back come in and maybe make that run. Who knows? <laughs> Throwing on second and eight, Cousins. Throw caught there by Osborne. That'll go for a gain of seven. And that's going to make it third down and less than a yard. Fired that one in there, able to make connection on a nice in route. With those faster passes when they're going that fast, any hesitation as a quarterback that the deflection, if you miss, might be bigger and lead to an interception? Yeah, and the deflection works both ways. Maybe a defender gets a hand in the way and it pops in the air. And sometimes you throw it so hard your receiver can't handle it, and he pops it up in the air for the defenders to grab as well. But a moot point there is they were able to connect. The way this game is going, the way that they possess the ball on the other side of the field, you go three and out here, you might not see the ball again until the second quarter. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Cousins. He's going to get this one down to Cook. Now Cook hit, and he lost the football. And the Seahawks have picked it up. And the return out shy of midfield to the 46-yard line. Always costly to cough up that football. These defenders, they become so adept, though, at jarring it free. Yeah, it's amazing that there aren't more fumbles caused because now, if you're an offensive player, you go through ball security drills every single day. It's really not out of line to think you should take the ball to bed with you and just hold on to it. <laughs> but the bottom line is, no matter how much you try to protect it, these guys are pretty good at finding ways to knock it out. Coming to the line here to begin their next drive, the Seahawks offense. Well, what do you think? You get the ball off the turnover near the middle of the field. You take a shot here on the first play? You know I'm big on that. I love when I have great field position. After a turnover, I feel like I might have them a little bit off balance. I prefer to take a shot, but a lot of coaches will tell you you only do it if you trust the guy 
who's got the football in his hands, meaning if it's not there, he won't force it downfield and maybe turn into an interception. He'll go to the check down, go to a second option, and go ahead and take the play that's in front of him. And just a yard to go here on second down. Wilson leaves this one with Penny. And he'll be brought down, it looks like, right at the 40. How about that there? No frills, no additives, right? Nothing crazy. Just find a way to pick up the first down. A nice run right there. On first down, Wilson. And this turns into a nice gain with a slide at the end. Partner, he was going through his progressions. Not there, not there. After about the third one, he decided he better pull it down and run for it. And he slides down and avoids the hit for good measure. They had to settle for three last drive, hoping this second go around ends in six. In good position, first and ten. And his throw is going to be incomplete. He had an open man that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely. Just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and ten. They'll run with Penny here out of the shotgun. He'll get only three there, so it leaves him with a third and seven ahead. Pretty good little two-play sequence there. You force the incompletion, then a very short pickup. Yeah, now maybe you bring in an extra defensive back or two because you want to try and defend on third down. They like to play those nickel or sub packages, don't they? An extra defender in the secondary for the Vikings here on third down. There's Wilson to throw. And the throw there going to be incomplete. More problems here on third down. They've converted only once so far in this first half. And you know as well as I do in this league, if you don't win on third down, it makes it hard to win a ball game because then you're relying on your defense, relying on your special teams. You've got to get it done with your offensive unit. And Myers able to knock it through. And that will add three more to their lead. It pushes it up to six. So scores on their first two possessions, but 6 nothing. so field goals probably not what they were hoping for. Yeah, you're exactly right about that. Not what they were hoping for, but they should be happy that they have points on the board. It almost feels like that old slow and steady wins the race, doesn't it? In this case, though, they want to be slow and steady now but get explosive later and put the points up on the board. Myers now converted on the field goal try. Now he's on to kick it away. Ken Nwagu now out of his end zone. And they'll get him down right around the 25, actually the 26 officially, so a net gain of one there. Here are the Vikings now to start their next drive. And last time they coughed it up, led to a field goal. They're fortunate that it only led to a field goal, but still, they're not happy about it. Could you sense the relief, though, when oh, they yeah. only gave up the field yeah. goal and they were able to trot back out on the field and start this drive, a little more pep in their step because they didn't cost their team a touchdown, but they know they've got to do it a lot better than they did on the last possession. The coach will just be relieved, though, if they recoup with a score here, right? I think the coach would be ecstatic to see them pick themselves back up and now take it downfield and punch in the end zone without turning it over. From the 31, Cousins. And that falls to the ground incomplete. 
Well, a nice job of bodying him up defensively, and now it brings up third down. They come up now third and five following the incomplete pass. Throwing his cousins. Open here, Adam Thielen. And he will have a Vikings first down as he's able to get eight yards there on third and five. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there. Keeps the sticks moving. On first and 10, Cousins. High throw, but the catch is made. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. So from Seahawk territory now, it's first and 10 at the 47. Cousins to throw it. Open man here is Conklin. And he's corralled, but not before getting it inside the 35. Well, that tight end position, it just seems to continue to evolve every year in the NFL. Yeah, you're getting really terrific athletes. A lot of them maybe were wide receivers at one point. They continue to give you speed, great hands, and big bodies, which make them excellent targets for quarterbacks. Uh, here's a throw right side taken in by his tight end. And he gets it down a yard or two shy of the 30 before he's out of bounds. They'll contain him to just four, second down. Play action now, Cousins. And the Seahawks defense gets to him, and they bring him down. Benson Mayoa, give him the credit for the sack and a loss of 14 yards. But enough takes a start to have a good drive, quite like a big loss on a sack, does it? No, now they're looking at a third and long, and suddenly the momentum shifted to the other side of the football. And old Mo is a very, very fickle man. So now after the sack, Cousins and the Vikings come up here third and long. From the shotgun, it's Cousins. And this is going to be incomplete. He released that awkwardly. It almost looked like a pitcher who gripped his fastball a little too hard and let it go late, and it bounced in front of the plate. Yeah, one of those fastballs that ends up at 57 feet, not 60 feet, 6 inches. Just a little short with the arm, which is unusual because we saw him in warm-ups. He's got a big, strong arm when he delivers it with confidence. Now Jordan Berry on to kick this one away. And this will carry out of bounds. Where are they going to spot it now? At about the 18-yard line, it looks like. The Seattle offense now set to come back out on the field. And their two drives thus far both led to points, albeit both field goals, so the lead just 6 to nothing. But the ability to move the ball is evident. Well, that's, you know, heartening, as they say. But it's not what they're about. What they're about is putting the ball in the end zone and putting sixes on the board. So if you're the offensive coordinator, you like what you're doing, but you don't love it. You've got to find a way to ring that bell. Then you can have a little self-satisfied grin. Right now, a little more determination is needed. Now Wilson on first down. And the catch is made here by Tyler Lockett. And way up past the 35 before he's taken down. So many times in my career, I've heard coaches talk about completions are one thing. But as long as we're there at the catch and we get guys on the ground, we can live with that. But if you're going to give up 10, 12, 15 yards after the catch, then your defense is going to be in a lot of trouble. From all the way up at the 38 now after a good start to the drive. From the shotgun, Wilson. 
That one taken in by Dwayne Eskridge. And this will be stopped at the 44. That one good for seven yards. Never make the mistake that the slot receivers, especially the little guys like we're watching here, are just quicker than fast. A lot of them combine quickness and speed, and they catch a lot of footballs as we just saw there. On second down, it's Carson, and he'll take this one up close to about the 45. That play reminded me a lot of a former teammate of mine. We used to call him the trash man. His ability to sift through traffic and make plays was uncanny. And that's exactly what you want from your Mike linebacker. And the Seahawks on third down, just one for three thus far. This time it's third and three. Now we've got whistles and movement up front. I think this is against Seattle. That was a third and somewhat manageable now, not so manageable. Exactly, because you had a play call on that you felt like, hey, this could go quick, and it doesn't take much to get it done. Now you've got to start thinking about a little bit of a deeper route type of a call, especially if you want to throw it. Now after the false start, they need eight yards here on third down. Here's Wilson. That's going to be complete to his tight end, Everett. And he is going to have a Seahawks first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. A reminder, coming up at intermission, we'll get highlights of this Super Bowl from Jonathan Coachman of the crew in Orlando for our EA Sports halftime report. Here's a throw to his running back. It's complete. And he's corralled at the 40, but not before picking up eight. Only needing two yards on second down. From the gun, it's Wilson. This one into the hands of Metcalf. And defensively, they were in zone coverage there. Do you have to be a little careful you're losing playing against a good quarterback like he is to not play too much zone? Yeah, you have to be careful about how much time you're giving up. I think it's a good point you just brought up. So maybe if you still want to play zone, you go to a zone blitz scheme, and you can drop anyone out of your defensive front, defensive end, defensive tackle. It doesn't matter. You just exchange someone to bring more pressure towards the quarterback and still try and cover downfield. Now the Seahawks going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with a tick under a minute to go before half. working with a second and three. Here's Wilson. That's complete to Disley, the tight end. Now the Seahawks call the second of their three timeouts as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. Could we get a touchdown in this first half after all? It's first and 10. To throw again is Wilson. That's caught by Penny. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. And a nice gain and a broken tackle along the way. And really, we shouldn't be surprised, should we? That's what runners do, especially the best ones. They break tackles and gain extra yardage. An inaugural trip to the red zone here for the Seahawks. It's first and 10 from the 12. And he can't find anywhere to go with it, and he goes down. It'll only be a loss of a couple, but the pressure gets home on first down. 
He's certainly one of those quarterbacks that can burn you with his mobility, but that time able to hem him in and get him to the ground. Perfect descriptor right there about how they kept him in the pocket. Excellent job of containment, but they were still able to continue to bring such strong pressure without letting him escape. But how about those guys in the secondary as well? Kept the coverage tight, plastered to the receivers, and left no real options for him to throw it downfield. Behind the chain, second and 12. Another try after the first down sack. Wilson, and that's going to be incomplete. 12 seconds left. As his old brain remembers, when I see five wide receivers on the field as a defender, I know the ball's coming out hot. They expected it and got there and popped it free. A third field goal of the first half, not what they're looking for as they come up on third down. Now it's Wilson. He'll find Metcalf. Bring it up, bring it up. Nifty running there, but it'll come on what should be the final play of half number one. So we've come upon halftime in the big one, the Super Bowl. As we send you to our EA studios in Orlando, here's Jonathan Coachman with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Okay, right, Brandon. Thanks very much. And welcome in, everyone, to this slimmed-down version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. And welcome, everyone, to this abridged version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. This game's had a little bit of everything thus far and certainly plenty to look forward to as the teams are right back out there for the second half. So we'll get right back out there as well as we'll turn it back over to Brandon Godden. All right, Coach, thanks. Yeah, both teams likely to make some changes in what's been a closely fought battle to this point. These two teams sat through a longer than usual 30 minute wait, but we're back in action here in this Super Bowl. Taken at the goal line. And out a little across the 25 to the 27. Out come the Vikings. They'll have it first on offense as we begin the third. And they trail here in the Super Bowl, but fortunately for them, Charles, very much still within striking range. Yeah, things didn't go exactly the way they planned in the first half. To me, they appeared to be a little bit tight, made a few errors they normally wouldn't. But, of course, this is the Super Bowl, so things get a little bit heightened in that regard. But I think they have to feel a little fortunate. They're only down what they are here starting the third quarter. Cousins and the Vikings with a first and 10 at their own 27. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. He gets this one into the hands of Dalvin Cook. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. Well, they certainly had success throughout this contest, getting him the ball in the passing game, and there he picks up another first down. Whatever they saw going into this one, they've been able to capitalize on it, and no adjustment has been made to take it away. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Cousins gives way to Cook, and he sneaks his way forward only for a couple here, second down. 
I have to think a major focus of the halftime means had to be figuring out how to create space for the running game to get operating. Well, what you pointed out to me at half seems accurate. That line has struggled to sustain blocks. Yeah, I would agree with that totally. They've got to focus on staying on their double teams at the first level, make sure that block's secured before they slide off and try and chip someone at the second level. Here's a pass swung out left to his running back. Give him five on the screen play, and that'll set up a third down. Boy, that was certainly well read defensively. And the key to any screen play is space to work, and there was none to be found there. And they tackle him for just a short gain. The coverage unit out there thinking pass on third and three. Now Cousins. And this pass broken up. Uh, the contact well timed there and now fourth down. They went with the dime look that time on defense, just flooded the field with defensive backs, blanketed everyone, took away all the passing angles, thus the incompletion. Here's Jordan Berry now as he'll punt it away for the second time. And the kick's away as he angles this one for the sideline. And this one will not be returnable as it sails out of bounds. Here comes the Seahawks offensive unit. They'll have it first to begin the third. Their defense has pitched the shutout. Now they probably need to deliver a little breathing room, maybe make it a two-score game as they've got it first and ten. Now Wilson, throw right side is into the hands of his tight end Everett. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. As they began this drive, I was wondering how they were going to attack since they're playing with the lead. Would they continue to try and push the ball downfield? Well, after one play, it appears that the answer is yes. From Viking territory now, they'll come up first and 10 at the 46. To throw is Wilson. He'll find Ballor out of the backfield. That catch good for only a couple. I wouldn't be surprised to see the next step in utilizing this position is to actually utilize more of a scat back in this spot because we saw the catch there, right? He made it, but he's a bigger, stronger guy, maybe not quite as elusive as maybe someone else you would put yeah, there. Yeah, didn't get the big yardage there you might out of a smaller back. From the 44. Wilson, and oh, he's unable to hold on to that defensively. A potential game changer, but it falls incomplete. Well, he did almost everything right. Excellent coverage, breaks on the football, just unable to haul it in and take it the other way. So he dropped an interception. The key for him now, don't dwell on it. Just move on to the next play. Again, Wilson. Sliding out of the pocket. He's got the first down here inside the 30. And he's finally down at the 21-yard line. He really looked comfortable there, scanning the situation, analyzing things, feeling the pressure, and then stepping up right through the middle and sprinting for a first down. On first and 10, it's Wilson. He'll buy some time right. And he'll protect himself at the end here as he winds up getting pretty decent yardage. Nice work to get seven out of that, and it's second down. Now, that was not a bad scramble there on first down. He didn't force it, nor did he throw it away. He was able to take off, and now he made it a very manageable second and short. Check, check. 
On second down now, it's Carson. Man, this play gets blown up. They'll lose yardage back at the 17. It'll be a loss of a couple on the play, so now third down coming up. Well, we saw a lot of negative plays that resulted in plenty of lost yardage in the first half, and that trend is continuing here. Now Wilson. And that is incomplete. I think that was a good job there defensively. They did allow him to drive all the way downfield, but once they got their backs to the goal line, they really turned up the pressure. Yeah, they let him get all the way down here. Now the field shrinks. They've struggled to convert, and that last incompletion brings up fourth. So fourth down, Wilson goes to the sidelines, and on comes Jason Myers for the field goal try. From the left hash, this from 34. Myers' kick is good. And that will make our score 9 to nothing. So they're able to build on things here with a field goal, but you know the question is how much longer can they really rely on their defense to pitch a shutout? That's a great question because you know the guys on the other sideline are saying, give us the ball. We want another shot at this. So yes, tight game, you'll take the three. But this game, it's far from over. Myers now converted on the field goal try. Now he's on to kick it away. Nuwangu now from his end zone. And able to take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. The Vikings offense now heading out to take over. They'll be in search of their initial points of the contest, trailing 9-0 as they begin with a first down. Try to fire up that running game with Dalvin Cook. They'll only get a couple up to about the 30. Well, they still have time to get him established, but in my estimation, they've got to pick up the urgency here. They've got to get quickly in and out of the huddle and run off a bunch more plays. Second and eight coming up. Throwing Cousins. Throwing the out route incomplete. That's Osborne. And he's out of bounds, able to take this one up to the 35. Timing is everything, and they work on this cut all the time. They work on all the timing patterns, and this time it paid off for them. Worked him to the center of the field, cut it to the outside, ball's delivered, gets both feet down for the completion. Third and short yardage, Cousins. Open man is Thielen, it's complete. And he will have a Vikings first down. They needed three. He doubled that. He got six. Well, we use the term pitch and catch a lot to denote an easy completion. We just saw one right there on third and three to pick up the first down. Why are those so tough to defend? Just because they hit so quickly? Yeah, it's all about timing and confidence. Quarterback sees it, rips it. There you go. They go play action. Cousins. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. We saw this a lot in the first half, and it continues. These receivers just not able to get much separation. So that means they have to win the 50-50 balls. They've got to go up with the defender and find a way to start coming down with them. And this time, contact and another incomplete pass. On second down, Cook trying to bounce it outside, but he's only able to get it back to the line of scrimmage. 
No gain on that one as it brings up a third and ten. He's already fumbled once in this game, and I thought the ball started to jostle there a little bit, but they got to him quickly at the line of scrimmage. They sure did, and remember, if you're not a very confident runner and you've already dropped it once, if there's traffic around you, the only thing you think about is protecting the football, not gaining yards. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down to throw Cousins. Got his man complete over the middle. It's Cook. And he'll only get this to the 47. He needed a few more yards to pick up the first. That one good for only six, and it leaves him with a fourth down. So much about this game is just understanding situations and then having to execute, isn't it? Guard the first down sticks. Don't let them get there. And they rallied and made the tackle. Here's Jordan Berry now, as he's on to punt for Minnesota. And he gets it away, a directional kick going toward the sideline. And no return possible here as they angle this one out of bounds. And we will get another look at Seattle's offense. And they're not going to play this conservative, I don't think. They had the field goal last time, and they're up, but they're looking to put a drive in the end zone. Oh, I agree with you totally. No one is, goes out on the field and says, all right, let's yeah. just settle for three, except in certain situations, trying to ice a game, that sort of deal. Most of the time, it's end zone, and that's what you're thinking, and I believe that's exactly what they're thinking as they begin this one. Yeah, no quarterback ever goes out there saying, hey, let's get three, <laughs> right? <laughs> not one that I've ever met. Wilson and the Seahawks take over now, first and 10 at their own 26. He gives it off to Carson. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. An opportunity to get a drive started here at the end of the third quarter. What you're trying to do is break the game down a little bit. Don't let your guys see too deep into the game, into the future, and say, oh, we got to get here. No, right here, right in front of them. Melt the clock down. Get to the fourth quarter. Try and keep going. And try to keep that lead. Exactly. From the 29, Wilson. Over the middle, he finds Eskridge. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. And now we get into the psychology of the whole thing because a lot of teams with a two-score lead in the third quarter, they almost become defensive with their offense, just playing not to lose. I think with this team, you got to figure at this point, this is a great spot for them to go into attack mode, really try and put the hammer down and finish this one off. They'll throw on first down with Wilson. And once again, it's Eskridge. And he'll go down, and that will do it for the third quarter of action. One quarter remains here in the Super Bowl. This is the National Football League on EA Sports. From Viking territory now, they'll come up first and 10 at the 43. From the gun, a give to Penny. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. If you can keep getting gains like that, Charles, with the lead here in the fourth quarter, I mean, keep running it, right? No doubt about it, but what the offense coordinator has to do is understand they're going to continue to stack the line of scrimmage. What runs do you have in your arsenal? that'll work against a stacked box and continue to move the ball. The last run got six, now second and four. Wilson. Quick throw and that's Eskridge on the slant. And this is going to turn into another first down as the tackle is made at the Vikings 23. Partner, I like that they're staying aggressive on offense because to me, this drive is what is known as a put-away drive. You score here, that might put this one to bed. I like the fact that they're playing with confidence and not playing with fear. They'll run on first down. Carson, and he is going to lose yardage here. 
Two yards the loss, second and 12. And the trend continues here in the fourth like it was in the first, second, and third. He's had nowhere to run. And you're probably thinking to yourself, why do they keep feeding him the football? Well, they trust him first and foremost. They do believe that over time, he might actually pop one of these runs. But the bottom line is, he takes care of the ball well for them, so they'll keep handing it to him. If nothing else, they've already taken a couple minutes off the clock here already as they come up second down. Wilson. And this is incomplete. Right now, the story of this game continuing to be the defenses because the offenses, they're finding it difficult to establish any rhythm whatsoever. I like how you come to us in praise of defense, Brandon, because that's exactly right. That was an incompletion for us there, but we've seen it throughout this game. Both of these defense coordinators, they're a step ahead of their offensive counterparts. And able to catch it on the left sideline, but they're going to rule him out of bounds. So it'll be incomplete, certainly one they'd like to have back as it brings up fourth down. A third down, he tried to stay in bounds, did all he could. He caught it, but was led a little bit too far. Yeah, and that's always difficult, isn't it? Because you know half of your body is trying to stay behind while the other half is reaching out, trying to catch the football. The top half worked. It was the bottom half that was in question. And Myers able to knock it through. And that will bump up the lead again to 12 nothing. So that may be not a knockout blow, but I, I suppose certainly every little bit helps when you're trying to salt one away in the fourth. Well, the possibility of being beaten by two late touchdowns or at least sent to overtime does exist. But time, definitely a big factor at this stage of the game, is in their favor. Myers now converted on the field goal try. Now he's on to kick it away. Nuwangu now from his end zone. And ultimately, he stopped right where he would have been if he had simply gone down to a knee at the 25. Minnesota's offense takes over possession. And we're at the time in this Super Bowl where, look, they need points. And they need them badly. Trailing here in the fourth quarter as they begin this drive first and 10. Cousins now. He'll dump this off to Cook. And he gets this up just shy of the 30 to the 29 before he's out of bounds. Give him a gain of five on the completion. And it'll make it second down. Here's Cousins. Swinging this out wide here for Cook. So give him two yards there on the completion. And that's going to bring up a third down. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers' tight ends because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. Cousins from the gun on third. Over the middle complete. It's Osborne. And he will have a Vikings first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Fourth quarter, every drive so critical, and you figure may only get one more shot after this, so a touchdown's imperative on this drive. It is, but you also have to think to yourself in play calling, don't hold anything back. Don't save it for the second touchdown. You got the first one for the second one to even matter. First down, here's Cousins. 
That's caught by the tight end, Irv Smith Jr. And he's out of bounds just before the midfield stripe at the 49. A gain of six there on first. Well, it certainly feels like there are more stars at the tight end position than there were even 10 years ago. And I think it's become more of a glamour position because of the ways it can hurt a defense, and guys want to be involved. They can be in line, close to the line of scrimmage. They can split out like receivers. But hands, route running, speed, and some toughness to go across the middle, you put it all together, you get a heck of a tight end candidate. He'll find Thielen work in the middle. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. You know, you're down two scores. I don't think you need to rush just yet, but you can't take your time either. Yeah, even if you don't want to commit to full two-minute offense, you have to up the tempo, up the urgency. Maybe you're starting to call two plays in a huddle each time you snap the ball. So from Seahawk territory now, it's first and 10 at the 46. They'll throw again. Cousins. That's complete to Justin Jefferson. A gain of six there on first. The goal for any offense versus his own defense, find the holes where guys are available and put the ball on the receiver before any defender can step up and fill it. They did it well there. Perfectly executed crossing route. They'll come up on a second and four now from the 40-yard line. Throwing his Cousins. Pressure comes. He's taken down by the Seahawk defense. That winds up pushing him back 11 yards on the sack. And that'll bring up third. He seemed to have a reasonable amount of time in the pocket, but he couldn't get rid of the football and the end result, Charles, him on the ground. Yeah, he's got to keep an internal clock to go along with his offensive line. When you're talking about three, four, five seconds, that's a reasonable amount of time to expect to deliver the ball downfield. So great to try and complete a pass, but it's equally important to know when to throw the football away too. So now after the sack, Cousins and the Vikings come up here third and long. Cousins. And he'll get this to the 40, but that's still going to be a few yards short of the first down. They'll get 11, but it'll still lead to a fourth down. One hallmark of good defenses is understanding the game, understanding positioning, and tackling immediately in the secondary after catches. I think we just saw that on display right there. Got to him before he ever had a chance to think about turning it upfield. If they're going to have a shot in this Super Bowl, they're going to need this one on fourth down. Desperation time. Cousins on fourth down. That one into the hands of Thielen. Complete. And so close, he gets it to the one. Out of bounds right there. A big play that time on the catch and run. Well, that's something you haven't had to talk about much this game. A nice big play right there. But this team, overall, they haven't done a whole lot offensively. Well, they're still sitting on the goose egg. We talk about defenses having pride in a shutout. This offense wants to get rid of that zero. Might we see our first touchdown of the game? Here's first and goal. Cook into a mass of bodies, and I think they held him out. They did. Call it no gain, and it's going to be second and goal. What a game this defense continues to play, huh? Yeah, they've been aggressive from the first snap, and they've controlled this ball game. But right now, if you're on the other side of the ball, you've got to match that aggressiveness. No points so far in this game. Moving the football, got to be that way to go against it. And he will score. Touchdown, Vikings. With a first touchdown of this Super Bowl and a long one at that. And the Vikings are on the board here in this Super Bowl. Well, time to let those folks know who are tuning in looking for the late local news. And we may be a moment because we've got a game again. And partner, except for those on the West Coast where it'll be seen in its regular time, right? That's the way it works, doesn't it? But how about that? Big time drive right there. If they're going to have any chance, they needed a touchdown there, and they went right down the field and worked their way into the end zone. Greg Joseph on for the extra point. And this is back to a five-point game. 
A pretty long drive that time. 11 plays all told. And it's capped off by the touchdown run coming from Dalvin Cook. Now Joseph tees it up to kick off following the touchdown. This is D.J. Reed returning. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here right at the 30-yard line. Here come the Seahawks now set to take over on offense. And the tension ratcheting up all around. A one-score game. Fourth quarter of the Super Bowl. This is what you folks came for. Every play with the potential to win or lose a title as they look to drain some time off this clock. Wilson and the Seahawks take over now. First and 10 right at the 30. Throwing to start the drive. Wilson working the middle here. That's complete to Everett, the tight end. Five yards on the catch there. Brings up second down. Fourth quarter down to the final two minutes. And we've got a one-score game. So it's Seahawk football as we march toward a conclusion. They've got a second down now as they search for a way to get this one to the finish line. And now right out of the two-minute break, we'll get a timeout used defensively with a minute 56 to go. Now this is a big third down, and you'd have to think we'd see a timeout right away if they can't stop him here. Here's Wilson. He's going to get this one out to his fullback. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Now the Vikings will use the second of their timeouts, and they'll be disappointed to have to burn one there after giving up the first down. They'll try and run some clock here as they keep it on the ground. And a six-yard gain gets them right around the 43. The Vikings going to use their third and final timeout as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. They run again with Carson. And he got half of what he needed there, two yards, and it'll bring up a third and two more. Seems pretty obvious defensively a key was stopping the run game. How have they done it so successfully? To me, it seems that these guys really did a nice job of paying attention during the scouting report meeting. And you know, Brandon, when they do those, they talk about the top plays that these guys like to run. The best runs for the top running back, those are the ones you focus on and want to take away, and they've done that pretty successfully in this game. That's going to set him back five yards. What? 
Not ideal there. That delay of game backs him up five yards, so now they need seven yards on third down. The Seahawks in victory formation as they go ahead and take the knee. Now here's Michael Dixon, as he should be able to pin him back deep here with his first punt. There, this punt will go out of bounds. I think it'll be inside the 25, and it will. Right at the 24-yard line is where they'll spot it. So Cousins and the Vikings down by five. A little over 20 seconds to go. A touchdown could win the Super Bowl as they've got a first down. Cousins to throw. And that is incomplete. So 17 seconds now on the clock here. Probably time for two more shots, and ideally, they'd like to get to midfield or so, so they have a chance at a Hail Mary on the final play. So after the incompletion on first, now second and 10. Here's Cousins. He's going to let it fly. Into a double team, and it's intercepted. Picked off at the 22. And the Seahawks have just about sewn up this football game. Well, you knew you had to take some chances here with the clock winding down, needing a touchdown to win it. And that one might have just sealed their fate. Yeah, and that's the nature of the two-minute drill. The offense trying to go downfield and make their plays. But defenses, they're sitting back watching everything that they do, but not too far back. They want to be in position to make a play on the ball, and that they did. Time for this one final knee to put a bow on this title bout. And the Seahawks are the class of the NFL. Seattle wins the Super Bowl. For the victors getting to hoist that Lombardi trophy, you know, we've talked to guys that have done it, and they say there's no better feeling in sports. I don't know how there can be. The, the journey to get to this game is incredible. And then to finally break through and win it when all eyes are on this game alone because there's nothing else going on, that's just got to be absolutely amazing. That The task, incredible. But the accomplishment, forever. <laughs> And they are the Super Bowl champs. The Lombardi Trophy is theirs, and so are bragging rights for an entire season. And what a season it has been. Feels like we have been there every step of the way. Our entire crew doing a wonderful job. Thanks to my broadcast partner, Charles Davis. For all those guys, I'm Brandon Gunn signing off. We'll talk to you next season right here on EA Sports.